Hey, good morning everybody. Welcome back to Maniac Studios, Maniac Science Labs, Home Studio Edition. Um, we're going to do a cool program for you today. We're going to get started in just a few minutes. I'm Mr. Andy from Maine Library, St. John's County Public Library, here in St. Augustine, Florida. You're in my home now. Since uh, we're not in the library these days, we're actually at home doing a lot of these broadcasts. And I'm probably going to try different spaces in the house as time goes on. Try to find the perfect spot for science and experimentation and having some fun. So today we're going to talk about crayons and crayons in particular and the man who invented them. Um, so just bear with us for a few minutes while we get up and running. If anybody wants to say hi, I'd love to say hi to you. We are live at this moment. This will be recorded so you can watch it later. Um, let's see. We're going to do some an experiment slash craft at the end of the program today just to let you know. And there's some things that you're going to need to participate in that craft. They should be listed on the Facebook event page. They should also be listed on the web calendar. Um, so if you wanted to try along, you have some time to look at that list and gather your supplies. Uh, you'll definitely want some parents help with this one because there is going to be some, some fun. <laughs> and we're going to be using uh, electronic hair dryers as well, uh, creating some heat. I don't want to give away too much about what we're going to do. But you're going to need crayons, you're going to need glue, you're going to need scissors, you're going to need construction paper, you're going to need an easel like an art style easel. You can make one up if you want. I'll show you how to do that later. Um, and you're going to need a hair dryer and you're going to need mom or dad's uh, help with this one as well. But it's going to be fun. You'll make some cool art that you can hang on your wall uh, once we get started. We have about two more minutes to go. Hey everybody. Um, like I was saying, this is Maniac Science Labs Home Edition, the first home edition one. Um, I hope you enjoyed the slime we made last week, the polymer slime. Uh, it was a lot of fun. I played with mine for the rest of the day. Uh, I kept letting it melt onto my desk at work and it kept getting flat. It was like a dome on one side and flat on the other and I would play with it and put it back down again. Uh, but it was a good time. And today we're going to play with crayons. Uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. So just a few more minutes. Let everybody sign in and join with us and we'll see how it goes. Now I do want to apologize in advance if the video is pixelated or drops in and out occasionally, unfortunately, as we all know, everybody is streaming these days, uh, which is being very taxing on, you know, the internet and all those channels. So we're going to do the best we can. I've got my office set up right now as close as possible to my router to hopefully improve the signal as much as possible, but we are working with non-professional studio systems here so we're just doing the best we can oh hi miss carmen you did make it on time i hope samuel's with you he's gonna have fun with this craft we're gonna do uh yeah a few more minutes we'll get started actually about 15 seconds for those of you timing at home so like i said if it, if it pixelates on you a little bit i apologize we're doing the best we can with the technology that we possess at this time Hi guys. Hey Alyssa, Jacob, Caleb, Julia. Hello everyone. Oh, glad you guys could make it. We're going to have some fun today. It's pretty cool. Now everybody, okay, let's make it official. We're officially going. I'm wearing my cat in a hat shirt. You know, make sure everybody keep calm. It's all going to be okay. We're going to be fine. And we're going to find ways to pass our time. And today's going to be a great way to do it. Uh, with this Maniac Science Lab on crayons. Crayola crayons. So it's based around a book that we just got in. The Crayon Man, the story, true story of the invention of Crayola crayons. And it's a brand new book. We just the library and you can't get it because the library's closed. So I'm going to share it with you today. Put in a little shout out to Natasha Bebel, who is the author of this book, illustrated by Stephen Salerno. Oh, there we go. He did all the pictures, beautiful pictures as well. And this book is brought to you by Houghton Mifflin Harcourt. Those are the publishers and they've given us permission to use this book today. So thank you Houghton Mifflin Harcourt for allowing us to share this cool book with all of our friends who can't come borrow it at the library. 
But when we do reopen, I hope you guys check it out and take it home and, and learn a little bit about this guy a little bit more. So here we go, let's get started. The Crayon Man, the true story of the invention of Crayola crayons and all those colors. Once there was a man who saw color everywhere, all around you. He noticed the yellow orange petals of the black eyed Susans in his garden. He marveled at the rich scarlet red tones of the cardinal. That's a cardinal. They're all around right now. If you look outside, sometimes you can see them. He admired the deep blue greens of the waves in the sea. Color made him really, really happy. When you go outside today, look around the colors in your yard. See what you can see. Do you see any red cardinals? Do you see beautiful colored flowers? Poor, poor guy. He worked in a factory. All day long, all he saw was black. Black dust, black tar, black smoke, black ink, black dye, black shoe polish, everything. His company sold carbon black, a new kind of pigment, a colored substance that was made from the soot of burning oil and natural gas. People use it in printing inks, electric street lamps, and in stove and shoe polish. It also made the rubber in car tires last longer. Pretty cool. Well, but it's all black. He loves colors. He wants to see more. And this guy's name is Edwin Binney. This is Edwin right here, the guy covered in smudges of black. He was an inventor. He worked with his cousin, C. Harold Smith. This guy, the dashing looking guy, he's the salesman. Together they were Binney and Smith. Harold was a great salesman. He loved to travel the world. Edwin was curious and he had a knack for listening and making what people needed. I'll give you another close-up look at that. Cool thing about picture books is all the pictures, right? So Edwin, Harold, those are the guys. Edwin invented the crayon. Harold helped him market it. Edwin invented a new kind of inexpensive slate pencil. There he is. It wrote very smoothly. The pencil was gray and children loved it. He invented a kind of chalk that wasn't dusty and didn't crumble. It was white. Teachers loved it. He invented a wax crayon that would write on wood and paper packaging. It was really, really black and people loved it. Paper was expensive in the 1800s, so children wrote with slate pencils or chalk on slates, small handheld blackboards. That way they can use them over and over again. Here's one of those, one of those little blackboards. And the teachers used the big blackboards. So, so far, he had created a gray slate pencil, a white crumbly, uh, a white chalk that didn't, and a black wax crayon. What's missing? The colors. So when everyone, including Edwin's wife, Alice, that's Alice, told him that children needed better, cheaper crayons, he listened. They said, the crayons we have are big and dull and clumsy. The lumps of colored clay only make fat, clunky lines, and the artist crayons from Europe are far too expensive. And they crumble and break easily. Some are even poisonous. Did you know crayons used to be poisonous? The original ones that they made? Oh my goodness. Well, Alice used to be a school teacher, so she knew what children needed and she encouraged Edwin, Edwin to invent crayons so those children could use them. He thought about his company's inventions. When you drew a picture with their gray slate pencil, it rubbed off way too easily. When you drew a picture with their white chalk, it smudged everywhere. And if you drew a picture with Edwin's new really black crayon, it was pretty good, but it was really black. None of these inventions were good for drawing in color. So he thought about that. A little light bulb went off in his head. Look at all those amazing colors. So Edwin listened 
and Edwin invented. In a small stone mill in Pennsylvania, in a top secret lab, Edwin's team experimented. How could they make better, stronger crayons? Melted paraffin wax, perhaps? Hmm, there it is, they're melting wax. They're trying new things. The first colored crayons invented in Europe were made from a mixture of charcoal and oil, so they broke easily. He needed to make stronger crayons. Edwin tried using wax instead. Now, for the crayon colors, he ground up all kinds of rocks and minerals into fine powders. Mixing and mixing and mixing, he used slate for gray, earth for yellow, red, and brown. Oh yes, and lapis for blue. Pounding, sifting, and heating the colored powders, would they be bright enough? Edwin's team kept on trying, and they kept on experimenting. These are all the different materials they were using for their different colors. Ground up rocks and minerals made bright pigments for crayons. They used red iron oxide, hematite, for red. Yellow iron oxide, geothite, for yellow. Varied shades of red iron oxide for brown. Carbon black for black. Zinc oxide for white. And imported ultramarine made from lapis lazuli for blue. And every day, they came home from that factory, not covered in black, covered in color. So much cooler. They experimented more and discovered that a little pinch of this pigment and a little sploosh of that one, warm it up a little hotter, cool it down a little cooler, and they could make lots of different shades. Now they had greens and oranges and violets and pinks too. Edwin came home every day covered in color. To make orange, green, and violet, chemists blended various pigments and clays. Some minerals changed color when they were heated. Plus, the length of time the mixtures were left to cool created different colors too. That's pretty cool. In a large tub at the mill, Edwin's team measured out the ingredients. Melted wax, clay to thicken, something for texture, colored powders, and in each one, just the right amount every time to make their top secret formula. Slowly, carefully, stirring by hand, they poured the special formula into thin crayon-shaped molds, smaller than any other inventors, and just the right size for children's hands. The mixtures cooled and hardened. Edwin watched, Edwin waited. And they knew that children might eat or chew on these crayons. Have you ever chewed on a crayon? They don't taste good. I don't know why you insist on doing that, but he knew that kids would do it anyways, and he didn't want them to get sick. So his team experimented to find new, safe, non-toxic colors and materials to make their crayons, because they were concerned about the health of the children who used their product. Very important. So finally, one summer evening in June 1903. Okay, who's good at math? How long ago was that? This is 2020. That was 1903. Is that 117 years ago? Wow, that's a really long time ago. Edwin came home covered in color and announced that he'd invented a new kind of colored crayon. But what is he gonna call his invention? Alice had an idea. That's Alice. She's his wife. She's really cool. She said, let's mix the French word cray for stick of chalk and the word ola from the word oleogenous, meaning oily, like the oily texture of the crayon wax to invent a new word. Cray plus ola makes, say it with me, crayola, crayola. Edwin listened. He liked what he heard. Alice always has really good ideas. So Binny and Smith shipped out the first Crayola crayon boxes, and the colors were red, orange, yellow, green, blue, violet, brown, and black. Eight colored crayons for only a nickel. Edwin waited. Would the children like them? Do you think they liked them? Can you believe it was only five cents for a box of crayons? Well, guess what? The children did love them. And now they could draw a tiny green caterpillar or the big blue sky. Their drawings wouldn't smudge. They wouldn't rub out. 
They were bright and could last a long, long time. Now we just need someone to invent a magnet to hang them on the refrigerator. By the 1900s, inventors had figured out how to make cheaper paper using wood pulp, so children could now draw on paper instead of just using slate. Look at these cool things they drew. Can you draw stuff like that? Yeah, pretty cool stuff. And even better, the World's Fair came along, 1904. Excitement over the new colorful invention spread like wildfire and admirers from far and wide flocked to marvel at Vinny and Smith's invention at the St. Louis World Fair. The company's dustless chalk even won a gold medal. Proudly, Edwin and Harold showed it off, especially on their new Crayola crayon boxes. There's their gold medal. They're very proud of it, and they should be. Every day, Edwin brought colorful bouquets, bouquets from his garden to inspire his Crayola team. They made crayons in all different shades, and later asked some children to help them name some of them. On their 90th anniversary, Crayola held a color naming competition. The six-year-old winner of that competition won with the color name Tropical Rainforest, and that's it right there. That's Tropical Rainforest, like a greeny blue. Other colored names they came up with were Robin's Egg Blue, Granny Smith Apple, Macaroni and Cheese. I used to color with that color crayon. All kinds of other colors. Pretty cool, huh? At last, Edwin, because of Edwin Binney, the man who saw color everywhere, who had a knack for listening and making what people needed, children all around the world could reach out for just the right shade of color for their special magical artwork. Colors like Sun Glow, Wisteria, Jungle Green, Screamin' Green, Razzmatazz, Robin's Egg Blue, Wild Watermelon, Marvelous, Purples, Mountains, Majesty, Cadet Blue, Lavender, Timberwolf, and they could draw anything, even cool octopuses, octopi. So, that's the story of Edwin Binney, the man who created the Crayola Crayon. Let's take a look at a Crayola factory today and see how they're being made. Did you know that today they produce an average of 12 million crayons a day? Oh, that's a lot of crayons. That's over 8,333 crayons a minute in 120 different colors. And they're sold in 80 countries around the world. So what do you do when you're stuck inside all day? Break out the crayons, make some magic. And you know what would be really cool? kind of cool if you could uh, make some crayon artwork and post pictures of it maybe on this feed or on the Facebook event page or somewhere just to show off what you can do or put them on Instagram and tag them at SJCPLS hashtag SJCPLS so here we go this is a train car that delivers paraffin wax to the Crayola factory in Easton Pennsylvania there's the train car right there and the wax is heated and the clear melted liquid is stored in these tall silos ready to be pumped inside the factory. And workers pour the color powders, called pigments, into vats filled with liquid wax, and they add the clay to thicken it and mix them. Then the wax pigment is pumped into a huge mold that looks like a giant circular muffin tin. The mix fills all the 110 small crayon-shaped holes in each section. And cold water flows underneath the mold to cool the wax and harden it into crayon shapes. A large blade scrapes off extra wax to be reused later. Let's see. The crayons are pushed up from the mold and a robotic arm then moves them to the labeling machine. And there it is, the labeling machine. Pre-printed sticky labels on a huge drum are wrapped around each crayon two and a half times. That's why they're so hard to unwrap. Two and a half times. Here we go, keep it on. Ugh. Legs falling asleep. Workers check the finished crayons and store them in large cardboard cartons, one for each color. And to make up the Crayola boxes, workers place the crayons in the right order on a collating machine and a chute drops each one of each color needed onto a conveyor belt. A robotic arm opens the yellow Crayola boxes and sends them onto the conveyor belt and another arm pushes the collated crayons into each box and closes it. 
and the boxes move down the conveyor belt to be packed into larger cartons, and Crayola ships those crayons to the store where you can buy them. Isn't that cool? Who knew so much? Has anybody found their macaroni and cheese color crayon yet? I bet it's in the 48 pack. Maybe so. So Edwin Benny was born in 1866. He was the man who saw color and the man who invented the Crayola crayon. Pretty cool guy. So, who wants to make some cool stuff? I do, I do. I'm gonna have to adjust my camera a little bit. I don't have a crew to help me out, so I'm just gonna be making it on my own, doing the best I can, just like you guys are at home. So I'm gonna bring out my little wheelie table here and show you what you need to make our cool craft for today. So, let's see here. I'm gonna move this down some so you can see what I'm doing here. So, the first thing we need is an easel. I'm using a simple clipboard. That's a little low. Here we go. So, I'm gonna use a clipboard for my easel. Yeah, main library. I wonder where I got that from. And a book stand that I happen to have. So it's gonna set on the book stand just like that. And then you can clip your paper that you're gonna work on to the book stand and it stays in place. So you can mess with it. There's other ways of doing this. I'm sure you guys can get creative. Um, just so you know, I feel weird having my head out of the picture. Maybe I'll back it up a little bit. I wanna show you what I'm doing without being a headless Mr. Andy. Here we go. So we're gonna have a little platform here. We need crayons. I have a whole box of broken crayons that I got from Main Library. And if you guys ever tried to draw with crayons at Main Library, then you know we specialize in broken crayons. <laughs> Believe it or not, we actually replace them quite frequently with brand new crayons. They just don't stay brand new very long because they're well used. So I'm just gonna give you a quick sneak peek of what we're gonna make today, in case you don't have the patience or the internet streaming feed to follow through the entire process. What we're gonna do is we're gonna make art, flowers, just like that. In fact, after I made this, I had a brainstorm. I could make it better. And there's always ways to make art better. And you kids are always amazing at coming up with ways to make the art projects that I invent for you even better than what I invented. And I thought, I need a flower pot for my flowers. So I made this using my crayons, and then I just made a flower pot that I can put on top of it. Look, it makes it even prettier. It's so easy to do. So what we're gonna do essentially is you're gonna glue a bunch of crayons in a row, and then you're gonna hang them upside down on your easel and you're gonna use a hair dryer to blow warm air on the crayons until they start to melt. And as they melt, they're gonna drip down the page and make these really cool, colorful streaks as the wax heats up. And I'll show you how to do that in just a minute. If you wanna do it later or you wanna do it on your own, you don't wanna watch me do it because it's gonna be, it's gonna take a little while. It takes about four or five minutes to really get the crayons going. Um, I, rec I have a couple recommendations. A, Make sure your parents are with you. You need help with them. B, um, make sure you're working on a table or a surface that is allowed to get a little messy. I put a tablecloth on my table here, and I have some extra scrap paper that I'm gonna use to protect it in case any wax escapes my art and tries to get onto the tablecloth, because anybody knows that wax and tablecloths are not a good combination. So, Alexa, stop. Yeah, we're working at home. Crazy, huh? So after you melt your crayon wax down, then you just cut out some flowers, and glue them on top, and then put your handy dandy little flower pot over it to make it look even more professional. And picture frames are expensive.
our canvas that we're going to use. I'm going to use a light color. Looks like we might be back. Did we go away for a minute there? I apologize. The internet is crazy these days because everybody's on it. So we're just doing the best we can because that's all we can do. So since we're doing flowers, I'm going to do a combination of green, yellow, and blue. And if we lost the signal, I apologize. Um, we are recording this, so hopefully I can upload it and the whole thing will be there in case you missed any of this. But I'm going to get a bunch of different colors of greens, yellows, and blues. Maybe some browns, because that could be fun. But you know what? This is your plant, and it can be any to be. Get as creative as you like. It's yours. Your artwork to make. So I'm going to work with gray, green and brown and blue and yellow. So the first thing to do is get those sleeves off, which is not a big deal. Just got to tear that paper off. And we're going to glue these into a line at one end of your paper. And it's okay to take your time because you need the glue to dry, right? The hair dryer will help with that as well. Where did my glue go? There it is. I'm going to use the clear glue so it won't interfere with my art quite so much. Hopefully it'll be, you know, And I want to use complementary or different colors for each section. I don't want to have the same color side by side too much. We want everything to go a little, a little, uh, we, want, we want blending of colors to happen here. So put different colors side by side, not all the same color. But then again, it's your art, so you can do it any way you like. If you want to do 10 pink crayons and have pink flower stems, that's up to you. I am all with that. So I know you guys love peeling the paper off of crayons. I can tell because I'm constantly picking up paper and naked crayons at the library. That's what I call them when you take the paper off. They're naked crayons. You took the clothes off them. Kids love doing that with dolls and with crayons. I think we need a yellow one here. Let's put a yellow one up there. So basically, I'm going to go through the whole process of making this art. Feel free to follow along. If you want to just go ahead and work on your own, that's cool too. I gave you the basic idea of it. If I could give any recommendation to parents, um, use the hairdryer on the low setting. As hot as it can get, but as low a speed as possible because when the wax starts to melt, if it's on too high of a speed, it could blast the uh, it could blast the, the the wax off your paper and make a real big mess. So be careful. Make sure it's a low setting. And as the beads start to drip, let them do their thing. Don't push them with the hair dryer because that could cause splatter. And you just want to be real careful with that. Minimize your mess. wrappers. You gotta get rid of those. They're in the way now. So I'm gonna go ahead and use my hair dryer, which I just happen to have, and try to dry my glue pretty quickly so I can get to work on this thing. So I've got it on my hot setting and I've got the blower on low because I don't want to blow my project off the paper. Now I apologize this part's gonna get a little noisy 
So I'm not going to do a lot of talking. And when I do talk, I'll try to turn the hair dryer off so I can talk to you and you can hear it. So get ready for some white noise. The, uh, the hair dryer. Here we go. still fall down because crowns are kind of heavy but I'm gonna go ahead and nope nope they're okay not ready yet this is a good one to be patient with you want your glue dry before you start the melting otherwise they'll just start falling off the paper so back to the dryer I'm actually going to change it to the cool setting now because I think that might help the glue dry faster. blue one doesn't want to stay put. Get a little more glue on him. He's being problematic. If you're really brave and you're impatient, you can use super glue. But super glue is pretty dangerous stuff, so be careful with that. It glues quickly, but sometimes it glues your fingers too, and that's no fun. I speak from experience. Most of the crayons are glued pretty good. The blue one is being troublesome. Poor guy. So, maybe you can put up your easel, but maybe tip it back a little if you can. So, 
gravity isn't pulling quite so hard on these crayons. You know what? That glue bottle that I used is going to help me tip my easel up a little bit. Let's see if that works. That should do. Let's give it a try. Let's melt some wax. Do you guys like watching Max Welt? A wax melt? I'll bring the camera a little closer so you can get a better shot of the wax as it starts to stream down. Let's see. All right, so I've got my hair dryer on low setting, but on hot because we want the stuff to melt. So click it up to hot, put it on low. This yellow one looks like he wants to go. The first one over here on this side, right there. And this green guy. Okay, this one's starting to drip. Remember, don't blow the drips. You want them to go down the page, not across the side. There we go, we got our first one going. It's Mr. Green, he's dripping down. And that wax is just gonna drip down the page and, oh, there we go, oh, a couple of them are going to brown. The blue, Mr. Blue's going, good boy. Looks like our plants are growing upside down. Yeah, now we're talking. Now we got the wax moving. That brown one really came apart quick, didn't it? Let's see if I can back the thing up a little bit. Maybe I'm getting them too hot. Try to keep so you can see the colors. This little light green one is being pretty uh, stubborn. He's not, he's not melting at all. And this little green one here in the middle is not melting either. They might not be Crayola crayons. They might be different ones. But as they get warmer and warmer, they're, start, they're gonna start streaming a little bit more. The colors will start blending. And you pretty much just do this until you're satisfied with what you have on paper. How long do you want your, your flower stems to be? If you want really short flowers, you can quit now, but I'm totally not quitting now. We're gonna go all the way with this one. I'm gonna get this blue guy to go. He's not going at all. Come on, blue. And I've heard you can do this in a window. If you have a window that gets a lot of sun, the glass of the window will magnify the heat of the sun and melt these crayons also. But you definitely want to have something to catch the drips on because if you're not paying attention to it, who knows what's going to happen. All right, we're getting a little more rolling action, a little more wax boot going. You know, I bet Edward Binney worked so hard to make these things stay solid so you can color with them, and here we are melting them. I wonder what he would think of that. I bet he'd think it was pretty cool. Let's 
Still can't get those yellows to melt. They just don't want to go with it. This is a craft that takes a good long time. It's very meditative. You can think about what you want for lunch or dinner while you're doing it. Oh, we're getting some color blends. That little pale green one finally went. Getting some streaking and color blends going. That's pretty cool. Yeah, now we're talking. Get the wax to come down to about here on the page, a good decent length. And it's starting to go a little faster. Uh-oh. There we go. These guys aren't doing much. Let's try to get this side going a little. Now remember to always blow down with the hair dryer. If you blow up, it could cause the wax bubbles to splatter. And we don't want the splatter to happen. We want streams and trails. Like flower stems, upside down. Here we go, we got some new ones growing over here. And there's the brown one, he's finally catching up. Still can't get that yellow one to go though. I must have used some pretty serious clay in that yellow one. Trying to keep my arm out of the picture. Sorry about that. <gasps> I think I finally melted the yellow one. See that drip starting? He's starting. Finally. Well, he started, then he stopped. Hmm. Well, these guys are totally built in now.
All right, I'm gonna let it go for maybe one more minute, and then we'll turn these into flowers. Yeah, I almost knocked it over. Sorry about that. <laughs> Gotta be careful with your art. All right. I'm gonna say we did enough. I could do this all day. I really could. Just watching the wax drip down the page is just so much fun for me. Um, but you can keep working on yours. You don't have to stop. I'm just going to go ahead and stop now and let mine dry a little bit. It's still rolling just a little. And as it starts to get a little more dry, then we can start putting our flowers on. So, for the flowers, what do we do with that? Well, I like my flowers yellow. So I'm going to take some yellow construction paper and I'm going to make some flowers. And what am I going to draw the flowers with? Well, a crayon, of course. Got my crayon. See? Crayon. So I'm just going to do like simple daffodils. Can you see where I'm drawing? You can't see what I'm drawing. Let's take a seat to see what I'm drawing. So basically, I'm just going to make a simple daffodil design like that I never claim an amazing artist but they always have that little bit in the middle right where all the pollen and seeds are that kind of stuff you know scientific terms and then I take my scissors and I cut it out and I kind of cut along the lines that I drew, but you know what? It's okay if you're not perfect on the lines, because if you leave a little crayon, that gives a little coloring around the edges of your flower, which makes it look a little more real. whether they get touched by another animal or in the sun too much or knocked over you know so when I get this design then I kind of take the middles and I like to squish them in a little just kind of fold them in half like that kind of helps them look a little more 3d and then you can kind of bend up the edges a little bit so it looks a little more 3D, kind of like a flower. What do you think? Is the wax dry enough? I think it is. So now we get to turn our artwork the other way around, or we can just lay it flat. Now remember, the wax is hot, and some of it may go through the back of your paper. So just be gentle with it. And I'm going to pick a strand. This flower is a little big. I'm going to make it smaller. The stems that I made today didn't come out very large, so I'm going to make my smout flower a little smaller so it's a little more to proportion. But like I said, you can make yours any way you like. It's your artwork, so you make what makes you happy. 
Boy, that's a funny looking flower. <laughs> but it'll do the job. Bend it, bend it, bend it, bend it. And then we take our glue, pick a stem, put some glue on there, and there's my flower, flower number one. See? And then you can do the same for a couple other stems. Make some more flowers. I'm just gonna do three for now, just to give you an idea. There's my crayon. Let's make our little petals. A little center, cut them out. So much time can be spent having fun with paper and scissors and glue, just making stuff. And if you've got lots of broken crayons, you can make more stuff tomorrow. All right, there's my next flower. We'll fold up the little petals a little bit. Make it look a little more three-dimensional so it pops a little bit more. And we'll glue this one right there on that guy. There's my blob of glue. Put him in the paint screen so you can see him. And boom, there he goes. Now I have two flowers on my artwork. I'll make the rest of the flowers in a minute, but just to speed things along for you guys. flower pot earlier. Just have to figure out where I put it. There it is. I just cut out a flower pot shape. Very sort of kind of. You can see this side's a bit bigger than this side and that's okay. It just has to be big enough to cover those crayons if you want to make it look prettier. So I will put some fresh glue on top of my crayons and glue my flower pot on there. And there you go. So let's get rid of that for now. We'll move this up some so you can see. There it is. So say you want a picture frame and you don't have a picture frame. Well, if you have construction paper, you can make a picture frame. I'm gonna make mine black. All you do is you cut strips through the long ways of your construction paper, maybe about an inch and a half to two inches wide. You can measure it out if you're very particular, or you can freehand it like I do. That's why everything I build is always a little wonky, because I never measure it quite right. And then, once you have four of these, That's all you need is four, because we're working with a rectangle here. Make sure you have a smooth surface again. Get your crayons out of the way. And you put the first one like that. So just put your little glue along the edge. Is this open? That's open. Glue along the edge. And glue down the first part of your picture frame. And it's really cool if you can make the frame close enough to where the flowers kind of stick outside the frame a little bit. I like the effect it makes. And then you put some more glue on the other side and do the same thing. There you go. Now what to do about the flower pot? Should the flower pot go outside the picture frame? I think it should. I think it looks cool like that. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to trim up my paper so it fits.
just like that. Put your glue strip along the top. And voila, you now have a picture frame for your fabulous wax flower art. Let's fix that up. And there it is. You've made three-dimensional art using melted wax. Well, I hope you have fun. itty bitty ones that are just fun for playing with okay so tune in next week for that i'll be doing story time tomorrow morning at 11 a.m hopefully we'll have a better signal than we had today we'll just do another